Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Um, it's 2 p.m. already, so we'll just wait for a few more people to join in before we start. Um, I hope we can all hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. All right, thank you. So we'll just wait for a few people to, to um, for, for more people to join in. uh bowing community i see it's live on youtube right hello yes yeah 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 it's live on youtube could you just share the link so that i can also give to my students yeah yes i'll be sharing the link now i'll post the link on the chat box
Hello, Jack. Can we start? All right, Mark. Yes, we'll start right away. So, good day, everyone, and thanks for joining in. You're welcome to Tech Up Africa's um, first Tech Day Talks for the year 2024. Yes, that's right. We'll be having many more Tech Day Talks this year, and it promises to be enlightening and insightful. You wouldn't want to miss out on that. So, my name is Joy, and I'm the community manager for Tech Up Africa. So I'll be talking a little bit about Tech Up Africa. So Tech Up Africa is an initiative of Pan-African Women Empowerment Network um, founded by Mrs. Oluwashe Kende Peters. So our aim at Tech Up Africa is to support and empower young Africans in tech so they can be successful and established in their respective tech careers. So currently we're running two programs on Tech of Africa. We're running the Data Camp Donate Scholarship and Screen Bar as well. However, we're not limited to those two um, programs. We also have um, different tech upskilling um, opportunities come up from time to time. And these um, opportunities are usually from usually from programs from our partnerships with um, Zindi, Ishango, Women in Data, the Global AI Hub, Propel. Um, apart from these partnerships, we regularly have um, from yearly we have um, what do they call it? We have this mentorship program where we connect. Um, beneficiaries that have been able to successfully complete learning in a course. We connect them to mentors to guide them and direct them in reward situations. Yeah, we also have this platform where we connect African tech talents to the best global opportunities. Um, so you don't miss out on these opportunities. You can follow us on um you can follow us on our you can follow us on our social media channels. We're on um, we're on Twitter. We're on Twitter as Tech Up Africa. We're also on LinkedIn as um, Tech Up Africa. Yeah, you can also join us on our um, WhatsApp chat, um, community. I'll post the link um, the link to that on the chat box. So having said that. Um, Tech Dev Talks is going to be a monthly webinar that will be holding for members of our Tech Up community. So with Tech Dev Talks, we aim to talk about issues and solve issues that um, upcoming um, or people that are upcoming in the tech world or people that are just venturing into the tech world who might be facing. And as such, we have this um, webinar this month. So I'd like to um, introduce our speaker for today. Um, her name is Daisy Inyerere. Can we give her a virtual applause? Ooh. <laughs> I'm not saying our applause, though. I would like to see our responses in form of emojis or anything. Yeah, thank you. I can see. <laughs> thank you guys for responding. Thank you very much. Yes, so Inyerere Daisy is um, Inyerere Daisy. She's a data scientist at Standard Shattered, and she's also the CEO and founder at Inyerere Ogweno Limited. So we'd be learning a lot from her knowledge and experience. Like she has so much insights in data science. Yeah, if you have any questions for her, please do well to leave it in the chat box. It will be attended to right after our presentation. So thank you for joining us today, Daisy. We'd really, really love to learn from you. So Daisy, you have the floor now. Um, before Daisy comes up, please let everyone do well to mute their mics to avoid distraction, because this uh, meeting would be recorded and we wouldn't want any distractions or any disturbance in the meeting. So Daisy, um, you have the floor now. You can come up. Uh, thank you so much, Joy, for that wonderful insight, um, introduction, uh, much indebted for that. And uh, I don't know, I feel quite nervous considering that uh, I'm addressing entirely in Africa. And, <laughs> you know, it's my first time doing this. so. Uh, you also pray with me so that I have that confidence to, to deliver what's 
actually appropriate. Otherwise, I thank you all for joining and coming to dwell and learn with me, also to drink from the well of data analysis. I'll kickstart from there. Uh, so let me start. Or is there anything that I'm missing? Kindly, you can you can just post it on the chat box. Uh, those with questions also, you can post them so that at the end of this session, I can dwell on them one by one, if that's OK. OK? Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's very fine. OK, thank you for that. Now, I'm here to shed light on a journey that has become increasingly vital in a modern world, the journey from data to insights. Uh, in age defined by information overload, uh, the ability to extract meaningful insights from data is just a skill. It's necessary. It's not just a skill, but it's necessary. You get uh for beginners embarking on this journey it's crucial to understand the critical steps of the data analysis workflow uh, allow me to guide you through these steps each one a milestone on the path to unlocking the power of data uh the first step in our journey uh whether it's through surveys uh the first step always always is the data collection uh this one it it can be done through surveys uh the um, internal I'm, databases I'm sorry daisy come up yeah i'm so sorry to um interrupt um could you um sh um enable your video recording so we can see your face and also share your presentation uh apparently my camera is just i don't know it's that let me just try all right Uh, you can just see how that it is, so <laughs> apparently it's not appropriate. Okay, all right, no problem. Uh, now, where was I before the interruption? Uh, I was saying the first step in our journey is the data collection, and this could be done through surveys, uh, sensors, or exist existing uh, the existing databases and interviews, you know, research and all that. You know how we gather data and how we collect them. So. Gathering relevant data set is the foundation of any analysis. However, it is essential to ensure the data is clean. Also, we also ensure the data is accurate and representative on the problem at hand. Uh, so once we have our data, uh, the next step is always the preparation and the pre-processing uh, and for that th that involves cleaning the data handling missing values uh, and transforming it into a format suitable for analysis and that takes refining raw materials before crafting uh, for crafting the masterpiece uh, without proper preparation of data your insights uh, may not be screwed or complete. So you might have an incomplete insight, okay? So are we together up to that point? Uh, you, can, you, can, you can raise your hand if you are together. 
and I hope I'm audible enough. Oh, of course, you, you're um, you're so, audible enough. And um, the people are asking if you have um, a presentation to share. Yes, yes, I'm just giving an overview of what I'll be going through so that I'll, I'll share the slides here as well. All no right, problem. thank you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, with our data primed and ready, uh, we move to the exploratory data analysis, the EDA. Uh, I believe we've always, uh, in one time in life, we've come across the term EDA. It could mean so many things, but in aspect of data, <laughs> the explanatory, exploratory data analysis we also have the explanatory data analysis so we have two categories of ideas uh they say these steps involves uncovering patterns uh trends and relationship within the data okay uh we also have the visualization techniques such as histogram the scatter plots uh and the heat map becomes invaluable tools uh, in our quest for understanding. Now comes the heart of the matter, uh, the data analysis itself. Uh, it's aimed with the statistical methods, the machine learning, uh, the machine learning algorithms, uh, the domain knowledge. We delve deep into our data to extract insights. Uh, now, whether it's predictive customer behavior, optimizing business processes, or identifying trends in scientific research, the possibilities are endless and however it is essential to remember that data analysis is as much at as it is in science uh, and that we can we can embed it as a, de a delicate balance of rigor and creativity now, as we emerge from the depths of analysis, we enter to the realm of interpretation and communication. Uh, so on that, we transform our findings into actionable insights. Uh, the weaving a narrative that resonates with our audience, okay? Uh, whether it is a stakeholder's presentation, a research paper, or a strategic recommendation, uh, effective communication is key. Thereafter, we all, we, what good are insights if they remain tapped in the conference of data? Now, let me share my screen so that we go one on one. Are uh, you guys, are you able to see my screen? 
I'm not yet. I can't see it yet. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, are you able? Oh, no. Okay, yes, we're able to see it. I'm able to see it now. Screen showing. Yeah, I'm able to see it now. Good. Uh, so, uh, here's a table of content of what I'm going to to present unto you. And you can go through them. Well, the first thing is we have to understand what data analysis is. Uh, we also have the importance of data analysis, the preview, the preview of the critical steps in data analysis workflow. Uh, we also have to understand the business context of data analysis. Uh, now, we also have the data collection, the things that are just shared with you uh, previously on the preview. Uh, we also have the data cleaning and pre-processing, the data modeling and analysis, interpretation and insights. Uh, we also have a conclusion. We uh, also give a reference and an example of a data analysis project. Now, uh, let's move fast to the first thing that is data data analysis. Uh, we have to understand what is data analysis. And my definition for data analysis is that data analysis is the process of inspecting uh, it's a process of also cleaning transforming and modeling data to derive useful information and make inform informed decisions uh, it also involves various techniques and methods to interpret patterns uh, trends uh, it also involves methods to interpret relationship within the data sets uh, data analysis can be performed through both qualitative and quantitative approaches depending on the nature of the data and the goals of the analysis so that's my that's my understanding about uh data analysis so we have some key steps of data analysis uh those ones i had already talked about but i can still remind us that um, they include data collection uh and we've said data collection is gathering relevant data from various sources such as databases surveys sensors or the internet uh so that is data collection then we, it also involves um, steps like data cleaning uh, that's removing the removal of errors inconsistencies uh, and outliers from the data sets to ensure accuracy and reliability reliability sorry uh, also I'm we have sorry daisy Hello, Daisy, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, you've not changed your slide. It's still on table of content. Uh, yes, yes. I'm I was, I was explaining the data analysis. Uh -huh, sorry.
Okay, yes, I know. Uh, I've understood what you wanted, but let me just uh, do the the first three so that on the next the next part from the data collection, I'll be able to share the next screen. All right, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh, thank you. So I was dwelling on uh, data analysis and we I was looking at the steps of data analysis and I've talked of data collection. I've also talked of data cleaning. Uh, I was moving next to uh, the EDA, the exploratory data analysis. <clears throat> and uh, my understanding for that is is that it involves investigating the data sets to understand its structure, uh, <coughs> distribution, and relationship using statistical and visualization techniques. So that's my understanding um, on EDA. Uh, next step is uh, transformation. Transformation also is a step for data analysis, and this one, uh, involves be pre uh, preparing the data for analysis by standard standardizing formats, scaling variables, or encoding uh, the categorical variables. Sorry, you know, from this end of this end side of the of the country or of the continent, we have issues with some syllables. So some things might pass you, but I hope you bear with me. You understand? Yeah, sure. Are we together? Yeah. Yes, Daisy. So wherever there seem to be question, you can just raise your hand. Uh, but in our professional way, <laughs> uh, thank you. So the next step is. Uh, the statistical analysis and uh, this one involves applying statistical methods to identifying patterns, correlations and dependencies within the data. So we ha we also have some statistical steps as part of data analysis. Uh, you also understand that data analysis goes hands in hands with uh, machine learning. And so we cannot dispute machine learning as another step for analyzing data. So uh, machine learning also is the utilization of algorithms and models to predict outcomes uh, to classify data or to discover hidden patterns. Uh, so the uh, machine learning also is a tool kinda for data analysis. It's also a step for that. Uh, we also have another step as uh, for analysis for data analysis, uh, it's interpretation and communication. So this one involves drawing meaningful insights from the analysis and data. Uh, and data analysis is crucial for several re reasons. Uh, the reasons, um, the reasons you all know it, why data analysis is crucial. Uh, we'll dwell into that uh, as we move on now. Uh, we also have a final step uh, that involves uh, for uh, for that another step is uh, it's also informed that informed that a uh, informed decision making yeah this is another step or i think no it's an importance of analyzing data so we are moving next to the importance of analyzing data 
Uh -huh. And the first thing is to know why is it important for us to analyze data. You as a data analyst, why is it important for you to analyze data? And the first thing is that it brings informed decision making. When you analyze your data, or rather data, as some of us could prefer, uh, uh, when you analyze data, uh, organizations can make informed decision based on evidence, rather, intuitions of guesswork. Uh, these lead to better outcomes and more efficient resource allocation. So when you, that's uh, importance, the first importance of analyzing, of doing a data analysis. Uh, we've said it, it brings about informed decision making. Uh, so, uh, so that at least if you meet an HR or the CEOs, huh, they can have at least evidences rather than intuition or guessworks uh, to, to, to have them. Uh, do better locations of resources and to dwell on the on the shortcomings or on the downer parts of them. Uh, also, another importance is identifying trends and patterns. Huh? When you do data analysis, uh, it importantly helps you to identify the trends and patterns. And in identifying trends, uh, patterns, and correlation within data sets, uh, you can uncover valuable insights about customer behavior, uh, market trends, and operational efficiencies. Uh, that's another importance. Uh, we've said the first one was informed decision making. Uh, the second one is identifying trends and patterns. Uh, third one uh, is about risk management. When you Delved into data analysis, it helps you to manage risks. Mm. Analyzing data enables uh, you uh, and your organization to identify the, miti the mitigate risks more effectively. By doing this, you understand the historical trends and potential future scenarios businessmen can develop strategies in minimizing risks and maximizing opportunities or revenues where money is involved another one is optimizing performance uh, yes when you analyze data you can optimize the performance uh, uh, this allows you, an organization, to optimize their process, uh, their products, uh, uh, the services based on insights gained from analyzing performance metrics. Uh, this leads to improved efficiency, productivity, and profit and profitability. So, uh, in importance of analyzing data, we also have, can also help you to optimize the performance. Uh, next to that is personalization and customer satisfaction. You know, uh, as a business person or, or, it's it's only about business actually uh you can personalize and bring some customer satisfaction uh uh this one will also help the customers to personalize their offerings and tailor their marketing efforts to individual preference uh let's say um I own a, I own a, a, a medical facility and 
I want more and more clients to visit my facility. So I'm going to have a personalized uh, customer satisfaction. Like I can, I can give a, a feedback form so that when you're attended to and you're, everything is done, you just give your feedback there. So uh, we are seem to have shortcomings. We can dwell on that and where we need to have some strength. We also can dwell on that and what is good. We also just improve on that as well. Now, uh, that is another importance of analyzing data. Uh, another point is innovation and competitive and competitive advantage. So when you analyze your data, let's say you are have your own uh, a tours and travel company. You know, this analyzing the data is going to make you uh, compete your other competitors. Huh? It's going to make you at least dwell on the shortcomings of your company. You dwell on them and this one itself can make you beat the, the other competitors. And so uh, that analysis can drive innovation by uncovering new opportunities. Yes, you can just go out, look at the at the trends, yeah. So that when you come back, you can uncover new opportunities. Uh, then you predict the market trend. Hmm? You, you uh, a good example is that one of 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 a tours and travel company. So you know they offer a variety of services. Uh, now you'll find that there are those um, there are those services that even a day can pass without any client huh? needing any service from that. But you'll find there's that one that uh, in a day uh, you can have more clients on it. They need a service from that. So analyzing data will also make you predict the market trend. And with that, uh, you can identify the areas for improvement uh, and also organizations that leverage data effectively gain a competitive edge in their industries. When you, when you, when you, when you leverage data analysis in your companies, you know, most companies fall because they don't, uh, they don't have much knowledge about analyzing data. They just stick with them. <laughs> the most important thing is that the profit is made and that is done. They never know that there are also some channels to undergo so that they improve on their sales. Uh, the, I think I'm done on the importance of the importance of data analysis. Now we're moving next to the preview of the critical step. These ones are already shared, so I don't I don't see any need for us dwelling on them. The previews are like um, we have data collection, the the data modeling, the data cleaning and interpretations insights. So uh let me share my screen next is understanding the business context as a data analysis you need to understand the you need to understand the business context uh let me share Funny name. Sarah. 
ini untuk <laughs> Uh, good. Now we have understanding the business context in data analysis. And on that, we have some keynotes to take. Uh, first thing is defining the business context. Uh, we also have to gather the relative information and to determine the key performance indicators, the KPIs and the matrices. Now, uh, on this, let me just define the, the business context of data analysis and understanding the business context of data analysis involves recognizing how data analysis aligns with the objectives uh, the challenges and operations of an organization uh, so uh, we have some data analysis that feeds on the business context. Uh, the first one is the business goal and the objectives. Uh, yes, we have the business goals and the objectives. So we, uh, we dwell on that. Uh, the business goal. Uh, that analysis should directly support the achievement of the organization goal and objectives. Actually, we are all into business to make profits, and we ought to sometimes ignore some of these some of these important keys, like understanding the business context. You know, some of us are just there for the sake of, of fame or rather for the sake of praise uh, but they don't understand actually what that business uh, the objectives of that business so uh, uh for example if a company aims to increase revenue uh, a data analyst might focus on identifying customers segment uh with high potential for upselling and cross-selling so suppose you have your business you as a data analyst in that organization it's your duty to to focus and identify your customer hmm? the segment of customer with their high potential and the upselling or the cross-selling so that's the first thing you should understand about that business context uh the next thing is the operational efficiency hmm? the operation efficiency now you as a data analyst you can improve uh, the operational efficiency by identifying the bottlenecks the optimization <laughs> sorry uh, you can identify the the bottlenecks and the optimizing processes and reducing costs for for instance like analyzing supply chain uh, we can find data that can help streamline inventory management and reduce wastage uh, uh are we together up to that point um yeah sure, sure. Uh, we're we're together uh, good you know sometimes it's good to ask the people you are working with <laughs> you could be working alone so it's good if you are all together thank you uh also we have the customer insight uh this is also an understanding of the business context in that analysis you must have the customer insight you must understand the customer behavior and the preferences in essential for business success and therefore you uh that analysis provides insights into customer demographics 
the purchasing patterns and satisfaction levels, enabling business to tailor products, services, and marketing efforts to meet customers' needs. Uh, effective. A minute, please. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I apologize for what just happened. I think um, this is probably experiencing some network difficulty. She'll be back on the call soon. So let's just exercise patience. Um, for those of us that have questions, we can drop our questions in the chat box. Thank you. Uh, sorry for that. I had some power shortage on my end and it has inconvenient me, but uh, gl I'm glad to be back. Uh, uh sorry for that uh, actually i'm back and i'm glad so we just move forward uh to the next thing uh, 
No, we did not finish on the business context in that analysis. And we we talked about business goals and objective, the operational efficiency, the customer insight. Um, we also had talked about the 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 customer insight and uh did i mention about competitive landscape no i didn't so let's dwell on that uh the competitive la landscape helps businesses to stay competitive by providing insights into market trends competitors uh strategies and emerging opportunities by analyzing industry data uh, businesses can identify gaps in the market and develop strategies to capitalize on them another thing is risk management huh? um, that analysis plays a critical role in identifying and mitigating risks whether it's financial risk the operation risk or compliance risk analyzing data can help businesses anticipate potential issues and take proactive measures to addressing them uh, so far so good anyone with question up to that point uh, there being no any question let's move to another context is uh, another understanding the of the business context in analyzing data or in data anal analysis is that uh, it helps you should understand the business context by knowing much about the resource allocation and um, this is effective uh it is vital for maximizing returns and minimizing waste and this is always the agenda to, to all the businesses uh, so that analysis helps businesses allocate resources such as budget uh -huh, the manpower and infrastructure more efficiently by identifying areas of high potential and areas that require improvement uh also uh we have to identify that when you understand the business context in in that analysis you will be able to understand the the regulatory compliance many industries are subject to regulations and standards that require compliance and therefore that analysis helps businesses ensure compliance by monitoring and analyzing relevant data to identify any potential issues or violation now uh in summary to all that i was saying uh it is essential to understand the business context of that analysis uh, and what it involves like recognizing its role in achieving the business objectives uh improving the operations uh understanding the customer uh staying competitive uh managing risks uh, also allocating resources efficiently and supporting decision making and ensuring regulatory compliance uh, so by integrating that analysis into the border of business context uh, organizations can leverage data effectively and drive growth and success ah so we are moving next to the next key thing which is uh, data collection
good. Uh, on data collection, we will talk about the importance of collecting relevant data, relevant and reliable data. We are also going to talk about the sources of data and emphasis on data quality and integrity. Straight on time, let's just look at the importance of collecting relevant data, relevant and reliable data. So collecting relevant and reliable data is crucial for several reasons. One, the first reason is to uh, is for making informed decision making. Uh, one of the importance of collecting data is that we have to um, make informed decision making, and this involves relevant and reliable data that provides solid foundation to decision making processes. Uh, and you can trust the accuracy and the completenesses of the data leading to more informed and effective decision. Now, we also have a look at another importance of collecting data. Uh, it's about the accuracy and the precision. Accuracy and precision uh, Uh, it entails about the reliable data and ensures that the information collected is accurately represented to the real world phenomenon huh? being studied. This accuracy and precision reduces the risk of making erroneous conclusions and implementing ineffective strategies based on the faulty data. Another importance is the predictive analytics. Uh, so on that, we are more likely to have reliable data in making essential uh, and building accurately predictive models. Uh, when you predict an accurate model you are uh, you are actually going to have a very predictive analytics uh, that relies on historical data to forecast future trends and outcomes without reliable data the accuracy and reliability of predictive models are compromised uh anyone with addition anyone with subtraction up to that point uh okay nobody seemed to have any addition nobody seemed to have a subtraction nobody seemed to have any question so i'll just move forward uh Another importance of collecting relevant and reliable data is that it helps you build trust. Huh? It helps you build trust. Uh, collecting relevant and reliable data can help you build trust among the, 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 the stakeholders. Uh, including the customers, the investors, and the employees. When stakeholders trust the data provided by, by you as a data analyst, uh, the organization, the organization itself is more likely to have confidence in its decision-making process. And therefore, it can bring, it can bring up uh, the creditability, like uh, something credible, like the services they are going to offer thereafter could be uh, credible services. So uh, that's that. Uh, we are also looking at 
Another importance of collecting relevant and reliable data is that it helps identifying trends and patterns. Mm. With that, relevant and reliable data enables organization to identify meaningful trends and patterns that can inform strategic initiatives and operational improvements. By analyzing reliable data, uh, organizations can gain insights into market trends, uh, the customer behavior, and the operational efficiencies. So uh, in, uh, importance of collecting uh, collecting the relevant and reliable data is that it also helps you identify the trends and patterns. Another importance is that it helps in risk management. Uh, reliable data is essential for assessing and managing risks effectively. And therefore, whether it's financial risk or operational risk, um, uh, the compliance of the organization relies on accurate data. Yeah? So when you give uh, a reliable or a relevant uh, or a relevant data, whether they whether they have a financial risk or an operational risk or a compliance risk, the organization uh, still has some some accurate data to identify the potential hmm, and the threats and develop risk mitigation strategies. Uh, uh, that's another point. Uh, I think so far there are five, if I'm not wrong. You may pardon my voice, I'm having some cold, but I think I'm audible. Um, Alexandris Ikwechu. Whoever you are, I see you raising your hand. Do you have a question or do you have something for us? Okay, let's look at the sorry. emphasis no, no, of. No, no, no. Sorry, you can just move on. I actually had a question at the time. Oh, okay, you can shoot it or later. Hello. Yes. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. So, yeah. So, I had a question at that time. So, um, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's fine. Then you'll shoot it Thank later. You. Okay. Thank you. So, let's move forward to uh, emphasis on data quality and integrity. Uh, emphasizing on data quality and integrity is a uh, paramount to organization. This helps in seeking to derive meaningful insights that makes informed decision and maintain trust within uh, the stakeholders. And here's the reason to why you have to emphasize on data quality and integrity. Uh, first reason why you have to emphasize on data quality and integrity is that it helps you in in decision making i think some of these things are just repetitive and it's just something you know it's recurring so uh, you need it's like a backbone you need one or the other back to back now it's also another importance or another reason to emphasize on on quality and integrity of data is that it helps build trust and credibility and that integrity when it helps you when you build trust and integrity uh, with stakeholders including customers uh, investors regulators and partners uh, you are sure of of having an organization that is going to operate and give quality and well 
furnished services. Uh, also, we have another reason to why we have to emphasize on data quality is that it helps uh, in operational efficiency. Uh, so data integrity it sometimes facilitates efficiency of operation by ensuring that the process are based on accurate information. When data quality is high, organizations can streamline workflows and reduce errors and improve overall efficiency. So that's a reason to why you have to emphasize on data efficiency and data quality and integrity. Uh, we have another emphasis that is compliance of risk and management. The compliance and risk management. Uh, it's of course data is is crucial for regulating the compliance and risk management, and therefore organizations operating in regulated industries must adhere to strict data integrity. Uh, standards to ensure compliance with laws and regulation are uh, good examples of the broadcasting, uh, the broadcasting channels, or the all those the the, the famous TV shows. Huh? So you have to have some uh, some compliance and risk management you'll have sometimes when you want to watch a certain movie you'll see them airing something like a pg huh? to mean that you have to that they're trying to mitigate on some risk management then uh, therefore it means that the the program is only designated for a certain age set of people and that's why so the that's why you have to emphasize on data quality so that it helps you in compliance and risk management, okay? Uh, additionally, uh, maintaining data integrity helps mitigate the risk of data breaches and other security threats. Uh, I don't know where you come from, but from this end, we have these we have these lending apps or lending microfinances companies. Uh, in I think it's last year. You know they had some some methods or some weird methods of publishing those who have defaulted their loans, and therefore the data protections uh, of Kenya had issued some notice to them that. It was very wrong. You know, your data has to be protected. So that's why we, when you are collecting data, you have to emphasize on the quality and the integrity. So that's where integrity comes in. You're, you're in an integral person where however much you default the loan, uh, your, your data should remain secret between you and the company, not a third party. And that's that's a good example for that uh, we also have customer satisfaction uh, customer satisfaction uh, the high quality data enables organization for better understanding uh, their customer and uh, the high quality data enables organization to better understand their customer and deliver personalized experiences huh? see when a customer comes to your restaurant and it takes like an hour before whatever they ordered be brought to their table so you know there's normally that that booklet where you can write your your <coughs> your feedback so they, they collect these feedbacks go and sit down and neutralize on actually what they should appeal on or what they should look they should work on and by maintaining accurate customer data 
uh, organizations can anticipate customer needs and tailor their products and services and provide superior customer experiences. I understand one or two of us have have businesses or own businesses, if not companies, and you sometimes face challenges with these clients. Not all that come for those services normally uh, are satisfied, you know. But at least try meet some try meet meet some needs of them. Like you you may not provide a hundred percent good service, but at least it can be average, and that's why uh, we encourage you you do some good custom good customer satisfaction if it's not good then it could be average then later on that uh as a data analyst you can have a board with the management you talk and look on where to improve on and that one now drives me next to the sources of data uh, and the sources of data we have various sources of data and data can be obtained from those various sources depending on the specific needs and the objective of an organization you know some organizations still depend on paperwork some have moved digitally uh, they have the customer relation the system so that you know after you're served you can leave your you can leave your your feedback there so now it depends uh, on the specific need and the objective of an organization uh, also resources matters there see so here are some of the common sources of data we have uh, internal sources uh, uh, internal sources of data could be the transactional data uh, this one is the record of business transaction such as sales purchases uh, the invoices and the payments yes this is an internal transaction like uh it's a like the internal source you we have transaction data like the transaction of customer paying the invoices you issued the sales you made on that day you know those ones are data so we also have operational data hmm? these are data generated from day to day's operation they include um, uh, the production data that is those ones who are working into industries let's say there are production industries like food industries uh, the flower industries uh, the inventory levels and the employee records uh, those ones are in those ones are operational that is also, we have the customer data, uh, information about customers, including the purchase histories, the demographics, the interaction, and the feedback. So, you know, from the customer data, that the customer database, you can have your source of data from it. Another thing is the employee data as an internal source hmm, of obtaining data. Uh, the employee data is related in, to employees, uh, such as payroll records. Yes, you know, sometimes there are people who just go tarnish company's name by saying, you know, that company don't pay. But if you have an employee database with you, then you are you're good to go uh, we also have the performance evaluation uh, these ones sometimes work best when you at least the sales uh, what they sell the services they sell at the end of the day determines their evaluation or their performance 
you know, there are those employees that uh, basically they don't give what, or they don't understand why they're into business or why they're employed. So you have to have some employee data so that it helps you evaluate their performance as well. Uh, we also have a training history. You know, we grow, we all grow on a daily basis. It's not that whatever I know it's, is what all of you know, and it's not like whatever you know is I don't know or whatever you know, I all know, no. We grow on a daily basis and so, uh providing an, a training yeah providing a training also helps you at least get some data huh? you can identify that this person is improving or this person still is stagnant and changes are not recorded uh, we also have the financial data uh, these are also another source of collecting data. Uh, the financial statements, the balance sheets, the income statements, the cash flow statements, and other financial records helps you in collecting data. At least when you have the financial data, you are able to have some, some financial plan at the end of the year or monthly basis. Mm -hmm. And look at where exactly you need to improve on. Uh, we also have the external sources of collecting data. Uh, they include the public databases. These are like the government agencies, the research organizations, and other public entities. Huh? Like in Kenya, we have the, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics when you need data sets you can just log in there's always that public there's always that public database that you can access and get whatever data you need for your project uh, we also have the commercial databases uh these are the subscription based services that of that are offered like for example uh the banks huh the banks you know they don't give the internal database, but the external one at least that can help you come up with and know. You can analyze the data and know which one is best to bank with, which one is doing low, which one endured losses, which one is making much profit in your country. And therefore, uh, that's another way of collecting data under the external source. Uh, we have social media. Uh, this is very much common. Mm, you can nowadays we are advanced at least, you know, like as uh, let me give an example of my church. We have categories. So where I'm placed, I'm under the youth section, and therefore sometimes you know people differ on on. Uh, we differ on on information or as we differ then uh the other leader sometimes comes and tell us uh, so that this thing comes to an end the difference comes to an end let's vote and nowadays whatsapp has has brought that option where you can can people can vote and you can see the winner and so the winners are the ones going to carry the day whatever thing whether you didn't like it or not that's the decision we are going to move on with so social media also plays a vital role on data connect data collection uh we also have the web scrapping this is quite complex but it's also uh it's also a reason or it's also a source huh, for collecting data uh we have the automated tools that can start data from websites forums and online repositories and 
provide valuable information and analysis. Uh, we have the sensor data, uh, like for example, the IOTs. Huh? Those are our sensor data. I think most of us or some of us here are IOT practitioners or experts. I don't know much about it, but at least we can have some some we can collect data from those sensor so the from them the internet of things devices and the sensors uh to generate on environmental conditions equipment performance and other physical parameters um sorry i dizzy um can you hear me Yes, I can hear you. All right. Um, so sorry to interrupt, um, but we'd just like you to um quickly run through your slides so we can move to the um question and answer session because we have another meeting scheduled for four PM and we wouldn't want you to disturb this our meeting. Yeah, did you get that? Yes, I got you. So let me just move next. All right, thank you. Uh, the next point is uh, data cleaning and pre-processing. Uh, can you see my, my screen? Yes, yeah, sure. I can see it. Good. Now we are going to discuss on the necessities of cleaning the data and they include uh, accuracy and reliability. So cleaning raw data is a critical step in the data analysis process because it ensures that the data is accurate, reliable and suitable for analysis. Uh, therefore, there is ways for cleaning raw data to remove errors, um, inconsistencies, and missing values, and include and the necessity helps us in coming up with accurate and reliable data. That one we've talked about consistency. Uh, we've talked about. Uh, we also have the completeness the completeness of, of the data. Uh, missing values in the data sets can distort analysis and therefore the results uh, can be biased on conclusion. And therefore you have to clean data uh, by identifying missing values and deciding how to handle them, whether through imputation, techniques uh exclusion and other methods so you by ensuring that the data set is complete uh you as an analyst you are able to you can avoid or overlooking uh important trends and patterns <laughs> Hey, wake up. Okay. Uh, another thing is that it gives a uh, data quality. This one we talked about, but let me just dwell on it as well. <clears throat> uh, cleaning data is essential for maintaining high data quality standards, and the data quality encompasses accuracy, completeness, the consistency, the timelines, and relevance. Uh, so by cleaning raw data, uh, organizations uphold data quality standards and ensure that the data meet the requirements of the stakeholders and uh, regulatory bodies. Uh, in Kenya, we call them Kanju. So you also have the efficient analysis uh, Cleaning data or pre-processing helps you to have some efficient analysis. 
at least when you clean raw data before analyzing, uh, it saves time and resources by reducing the likelihood of errors and rework. You know, you don't have to ignore this step. Why? Because uh, sometimes you can be you can be in a rush, but at least it will help you reduce. Uh, it will help you reduce. Reduce what? Uh, it's going to help you reduce the errors and doing like a rework, like repeating yourself. You know, sometimes repetition is quite boring. So uh, when you efficiently analyze or clean the data, you are more likely not to re to rework or to repeat yourself. So analyzing clean data is more efficient and less prone to errors, allowing analysis to focus on extracting insights and deriving meaningful conclusions from the data. So let's look at the importance of ensuring data is in a usable format for analysis. Uh, one is for accuracy. Hmm? Ensuring that data is in a usable format for analysis is crucial for several reasons. One of the reasons is uh, uh, the accuracy. We also have efficiency. We also have the flexibility, uh, visualization. Uh, let me dwell on this. Uh, visualization data is a usable format. Uh, sorry, data in a usable format is easier to visualize and interpret. So visualization techniques such as charts, graphs, and dashboards are more effective when the underlying data is well structured and organized. Uh, you also have the reproducibility, uh, the scalability and decision making. So that's important. Uh, those are the several reasons for ensuring data is in usable format and analysis. Uh, we have techniques for data pre-processing, uh, such as data normalization, imputation, and outlier detections. Yeah. So these techniques, we, for example, when we have data normalization, uh, we have the purpose for normalizing that data. We have the techniques and an example for each. So uh, the purpose of normalization, data normalization, is that data normalization scales the numerical features of the data sets and to a standard range, uh, making them comparable and ensuring that no single feature dominates and dominates and the analysis uh, is due to its larger magnitude. So that's the purpose of normalization, data normalization. We have the techniques. Uh, so the common normalization techniques include the minimum and the maximum scaling. Huh? The minimum and the maximum scaling. Then we have the Z to score standardization and the decimal scaling. Uh, we also have example, like for example, the minimum to maximum scaling transforms the data to a range between zero and one, while the Z score standardization scale, the data to have a mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Now this one is statistics. Then we have another technique, which is imputation. So the purpose of imputation is to fill in missing values in the data sets to ensure completeness and enable analysis. 
uh, uh, imputed values are typically estimated based on the available data. Uh, we also have techniques. Yeah? Uh, common imputation, uh, the techniques under imputation is that common imputation techniques include mean imputation, the median, the mode imputation, the predictive imputation using regression or machine learning models. Uh, remember the first thing uh, I said, the importance of, of what was it? It was about, um, what was it about? It was about, it was about a step for, data analysis and we talked about the machine learning so here we have imputation and the techniques of that imputation we have some data learning the machine learning models so you see where the correlations are coming into and also we have example for that the mean imputation replaces the missing values with the mean of the available values for that feature while predictive imputations uses a regression model to estimate uh, it uses a, a regression model to estimate missing values based on other features <laughs> sorry then we have the outlier detection uh, the purpose of this is to identify and remove or flag data points that deviate si significant uh, they deviate the size of from the rest of data sets uh, outliers can distort analysis results and lead to misleading conclusions sorry Now we have the techniques of outlier detection. Uh, the more common outlier detection technique includes the statistical methods such as the Z, the Z score, the interquartile range, the that is the IQR. Uh, we also have the Taki method, uh, and well as machine learning based methods such as isolation forest and the K nearest neighbors the KNN. Uh, so example is the Z score method identifies a class as data points that fall outside a specified number of standard deviation from the mean to the data set. Now we'll move, we'll move next to the EDA. Uh, the EDA is that exploratory data analysis. And uh, we are going to look at the introduction on EDAs uh, like the visualization tools, understanding the main characteristics of data, the techniques, and how EDA uh, helps us identify the patterns. So, um, uh, let's look at the introduction part of EDA. Uh -huh. Joy. Um, yes, 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 I'm with you. Uh, good. Uh, so I need 15 minutes to fix you. You, you, you alert me so that we engage on that question. All right. Session. Okay. 
Okay, no problem. I'm going to do that. Thank you. So, uh, exploratory data analysis is a critical process in data analysis that involves summarizing, visualizing, and understanding the main characteristics of data sets. Uh, EDA helps analysts gain insights into the underlying patterns, relationships, and trends. Mm. and trends within the data, which can inform further analysis and decision making. Uh, so, uh, we have introduction to EDA as a process, and it includes summarizing data. Uh, like, it's yesterday I was interacting with the uh, the world bank uh their database and i had to summarize a data i was just doing this for fun and this all uh, it begins by summarizing the main characteristics of the data sets uh including its size uh the structure uh and basic st statistics this involves examining the number of observation like the rows uh, the variable columns in the data sets as well as the data types and the formats of variables now summarizing uh, st or summary statistics such as mean median standard deviation the minimum maximum uh, we have like in our quartiles uh, provides a snapshot of the central tendency and dispersion and distribution of data. At least if you are if you are able to know this, this can help you at least uh, come with a with a an interactive dashboard. Uh, suppose those of us who are system analysts. I know they understand much more better on this. Uh, we also have uh, the visualizing data. Uh, so when you visualize data, uh, the it's, it's the key aspect for EDA. Actually, it allows analysts to explore the data distribution, uh, the relationship and patterns visually. Common visualization techniques include uh, can, uh, histogram, the box plots, uh, the scatter plots, the line plots, you understand, the bar, and and the charts, sorry. So these visualizations provide insights to insights to the distribution of the numerical variables and relationships between variables and the presence of outliers and anomalies. Uh, let's move next to the techniques such as uh, descriptive statistics, uh, the data visualization, and correlation analysis. So the descriptive analysis uh, also it has its purpose uh, and the techniques and also the application. Uh, the first one is the the, the descriptive statistics. Uh, the purpose for it is to describe is to summarize the basic features of the data sets, providing insights into the central tendency and dispersion and shape of the distribution uh the technique is the common descriptive uh, statistic uh the common ones are the like the mean median mode standard deviation variance the quarters and so on i uh, also have the application its application uh is to understand the overall characteristics of the numerical variables in the data sets and these are like the average values, the variables, and the spreadsheets 
or the spreads. Then we have data visualization. Uh, so the purpose for visualizing data, this one we talked about, so I'm not going to talk about it again. Uh, let's look at the correlation analysis. Uh, this involves the uh, the correlation analysis. We have the purpose to it is to examine the strength and direction of the linear relationship between pairs of numerical variables in the data sets. Uh, then you have the techniques, the common correlation um, measures include the Pearson correlation coefficient, uh, the Spearman rank correlation coefficient, and the, I don't know who that person, the other name is the Kandul, I guess. Uh -huh. Uh, yes, the the candle tau, whoever person, yeah. Uh, so the application includes the correlation analysis uh, that helps in identifying the association between variables and assess the degree to which they are related. Positive correlation indicates that two variables tend to increase or decrease together. Uh, up to there, uh, I'd like us to, to post our questions up on, on the chat box as I look at uh, the next thing and the final one. Um, the doc is free. <laughs> Uh, the interpretation and the insights. Uh, deriving actionable insights from data uh, analysis. Is, are we together? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Um, Daisy. Uh, I said we can we can post our questions up on the chat box so that. I have some decorum on answering them one on one. Uh, cool. Okay, I'm back. So those us, those of us with burning questions, uh, I just request us on a kind of note. You can you can call them. I am seeing also our time is almost up. Let me just go quickly on the interpretations and insights. And I was saying deriving actionable insights from data analysis is significant for several reasons. And therefore, we have uh, the first one is to identify opportunities. Uh, actionable ins insights help organization identify new opportunities for growth, innovation, and improvement by uncovering trends, patterns, and correlation within the data. Organizations can capitalize on emerging opportunities and stay ahead of the competition. Omera de Camisa. Okay, cool. Another thing is that it helps in optimizing the performance. Uh, it helps in optimizing the performance. So actionable insights enable organization to optimize their processes, uh, their products, uh, and services based on data-driven recommendations. So by identifying 
inefficiencies or the bottlenecks and areas of improvement, organizations can streamline uh, operations and enhance product productivity and maximize efficiency. Also, uh, Also, another reason for, for deriving actionable data from that analysis is that it helps in enhancing customer experience. Uh, actionable insights derived from data helps organization understand customers' needs, preference, and behavior behaviors. So the by personalizing offerings and Tele marketing efforts are uh, you as an organization, you can enhance the overall customer experience and drive customer satisfaction and loyalty. Uh, we have uh, the we have demonstrating the the ROI. Huh? The ROI is like the return on investment. So actionable insights help organization demonstrate the return on investment of their data analysis to efforts. So by quantifying um, the impact that data-driven decision on business outcomes, such as revenue growth, the cost savings, and the customer sat satisfaction, organizations can justify their investments in data analytics good so you guys don't have questions or hello daisy um so there's one question already um maybe we could just take that and round up because of our next meeting oh so i'll just should i read out the question to you Um, Daisy, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so should I read out the question to you? Yes, just read them out. All right, thank you. Okay, just a moment. Okay, yeah, so somebody's asked, um, Shukri Tadid Shah asked that, what are the best projects to undertake to land the first gig? And she says, if you are to start again, how would you do it better? Uh, thank you so much for that question. Uh, the best projects to take, uh, who posted that one? Um, Shukri. Yeah. What? Okay. So the best projects to undertake so that you you can land a gig on that is I think the income prediction uh, analysis. Yeah? When you can predict an income of a company, then you know companies or the organizations are are the backbone. Or they have they 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 own they own very they own big data and you know a serious company itself uh, a serious company will need a serious data analyst that can help them at least maximize on their revenues and make more profit as as it is always required so uh i think i've answered that is that okay or still not okay um, um okay let me check to see if she's still on the call yeah she, okay she, okay i think she, um he or she's trying to respond already um so shukri tadisha i think you can go ahead good what is the next question 
Oh, thank you so much. Welcome. Uh, who's shooting the I'm Shukri sure. sure, Tadisha. Are you done? Um, are you satisfied with the answer you got? Yes, but I have a clarification. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, please go ahead. So, when looking for first project in data, first uh, gig in data analysis, is one project enough, or I should do at least three, four, five? Is there like an optimum, an optimum number of projects that I should do in order to get that first gig? Second uh, question: Where can I get the data set to do that income prediction analysis? Thank you. Good. Uh, for you to land a gig, at least you should not have one, one one project done at least you should have numerous uh as for me like right now i have number of i have like at least 40 40 that i've done and on a daily basis you know data 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 analysis in, in involves our activities on a daily basis so anything that you do on a daily basis try come up with a project on it for example you 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 go to social media on a daily basis if i'm not wrong you sometimes visit netflix sometimes you visit youtube you use uh use whatsapp facebook you know those things are not just there you as a data analyst uh you should make good use of those the social media of platforms like for example youtube huh? uh, video can be uploaded see you should come up with something like uh you should come up with a project at least analyze the data of that video within two weeks huh? you should have numerous projects done uh the second question was uh, where you can get the income the income prediction data sets. Uh, we have a site called Cargo. We also have GitHub. I think you can you can register there with them. You can sign up there with them. And you can always find data sets on those platforms. Uh, thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Uh, thank you so all much. Right. Okay, Daisy. Um, I think uh, that's all the questions we have for now. And I think we might have to round up because we are running out of time. Like the scheduled time we have is like from 4 p.m. your time to 6 p.m. I just are there anything you would still like to say to round up before the meeting goes off? Okay, let me just wrap up everything. Uh, thank you, Power and Community, uh, the Take Up, uh, the Take Up Africa community for having uh, for having invited me to take this noble task with you guys. It was a pleasure, and uh, let's let's just let me just give an insight to that that uh, the journey from data to insights is a transformative one, and a journey that empowers us to harness the power of data for good is good, isn't it? So to all the beginners embarking to this journey, uh, I can offer these advice that we should embrace curiosity, uh, we should cultivate humility and never stop learning. Actually, this is a field that needs us to learn on a daily basis. So we should never stop learning and we should embrace learning or at least we practice on a daily basis about this. 
uh, we for in a world of data the possibilities are endless you get so that's why we call us to always cultivate humility and embrace curiosity and the insights are waiting to be discovered and that's all that i had for you even though i didn't dwell on them all but i'm hoping that if time give if there be any chance i'm always available you can reach out to me and we can also as well share and always learn together uh thank you wow thank you so much daisy thank you so much daisy. i mean this session has been like <laughs> a whole lot of knowledge like given to every one of us and i'm sure everybody i'm sorry can you hear me yes i can hear you okay yes and i'm sure every one of us wants to have a lens one thing or the other i mean one thing that stood out for me was when you were talking about um the importance of data that it helps to identify trends and patterns it helps to uncover valuable insights about customer behaviors i mean there are really a lot of things it's just really opened my eyes to see a lot of things that we could do with data yeah one thing that i mean can be a takeaway to um uh to the members that have joined this um program is that um is the need for data secrecy or data quality i mean i mean this was a really really awesome session thank you so much daisy and we would love to invite you for another session next time we are so grateful um, to call this a day, I'll be posting the, um, the link to our WhatsApp community so that everyone who is interested can join. The link will be in, is in the chat box right now. So anyone who is interested can join. And I'll write a to, to say a big thank you to Dave for really, really helping us, for taking out time to come and speak to us i mean it really 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 means a lot thank you very much um okay having said that i would love to bring the meeting to an end thank you so much daisy thank you so much thank you we're very very grateful thank you for for uh, for sharing with us your knowledge yeah thank you everyone for the um for the reactions thank you so have a nice day, everyone. So I'll be ending the meeting now. Bye. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. the invitation. And I'm much indebted on this. Thank you. You'll thank share you. with me, you'll share with me on the email the link to this. Uh was it on YouTube? Yes, yes, yes. It's and the YouTube. other link that you said you shared yeah uh, all right otherwise it's an evening on my end so i'm wishing you a good evening a good afternoon to whichever place you are at thank you all right thank you very much see bye you bye. see you all at the next tech day bye bye